I live in LA, I had an Uber driver tell me to get in the front seat of his car, and he patted it as well. I was like, I'm gonna cancel this ride right now. Just reason for cancellation, I'm about to be murdered. I got in the, I got in the car, because I'd been waiting quite a while, and I thought, you know, maybe, maybe we'll have something in common, maybe we'll become best friends, and then like, 30 years to now from now, we'll be at a party, someone will ask us how we met, we'll tell them how we met, and they'll go, well, he's clearly an actual psychopath. <laughs> Should never have got in that car. I, th I thought we would have things in common. He was like my age, he was white, so we could chat about white guy stuff. You know what I'm talking about, white guys. White guy stuff, like how tourists ask us to take photos of them all the time. If you're not a white guy, maybe, to, maybe tourists ask you to take photos of them. This guy's not down here, right? But I'm just saying, if you're a white guy, you get asked way more than everyone else. There's something about us that screams, knows their way around a DSLR. <laughs> There's definitely a few white guys here feeling real smug that they know what DSLR stands for. <laughs> I was in New York for a week. I took about 10 photos over the course of that holiday. I don't mind it, I think I'm pretty good at taking photos. I think I'm better than other people. That sounds racist. I just... <laughs> I was in Central Park, and this Chinese couple asked me to take a photo of them. I was like, sure. And afterwards, the guy's like, hey, do you want me to take a photo of you? Well, that's a lovely thing to do. You should always offer that. So I have like, a really nice photo of me in Central Park in front of the fountain with my arm around a random Chinese woman. It's great. <laughs> lovely. So I'm in the front of this Uber, and we, it turns out we do have things in common, me and this white guy. We both love hip-hop. And you know what sounds good? Hip-hop played loud in a car. You know what doesn't look good? Hip-hop played loud in a car with two white guys in it. It's not, it's not good. I'm already self-conscious that I'm sat in the front, because that is, it, it, why do you do it? It makes no, it's a violation of the social contract. It feels wrong, it's like when your mum sends you a meme. Just, that's not how it's meant to work, mum. Get back. I'm in the front of this car, he's playing hip-hop, it's not bad hip-hop, it's, it's good hip-hop, right? I've had Ubers with bad music, I took a trip to an airport, it was like 40 minutes in the car, driver played a two-song playlist on repeat. Both songs were Hotel California. <laughs> he had a 4.8 rating, so apparently his music is very popular. But uh, if you're wondering how do I know it was a two-song playlist if they were both Hotel California, it's a good question. It's because one was Hotel California and the other was Hotel California, brackets, Spanish version. <laughs> Bienvenido al Hotel California. Hey, mucho espacio on el Hotel California. I know those are the lyrics because I heard it five times. <laughs> So we're in the car, and this, he's playing it loud. And I'm, I'm like, I, like I said, I'll play hip hop loud when I'm in the right environment. If I'm in a car on a freeway, just driving along, no one can hear me, I play some like classic tunes. I'll be like Biggie, Jay-Z, maybe the Spanish versions, the Veteran Nueva Problemas. But if I'm in a residential area, people can hear what I'm listening to, white people music all the way. Simon and Garfunkel, Fleet Foxes, whoever won last season with The Voice, that's my playlist. I know how people look at me. And so I tell him, I'm like, hey man, maybe you could just turn this down a bit. And apparently British people, we're just fountains of sarcasm. Because as soon as I said that, he went, damn right, brother, turned it all the way up. <laughs> it's like, oh, and I'm, I'm getting nervous, because it's late at night, so there's not that many cars around. But every time we pull up to like a traffic light and stop, I'm praying the car next to us has their windows up. Because my driver, my white driver, is now singing along to the songs. And there is one word in particular he is not leaving out. I would go so far as to say it's his favourite word in the songs. He is singing it with enthusiasm. Sometimes he won't know the words to a line, but he knows that word and he sings it. And there's always that tension building up to it, like there kind of is now. The tension building up because you, you're sat there and you know the word's going to come because there's not many words that rhyme with trigger. And so I'll sit there and I hear a line ends trigger, and I'm like, well, I hope this rapper's about to tell us, tell us that Winnie the Pooh has a friend called Tigger. I really hope. And I'm there, and I'm feeling awkward, and then I had a brainwave. I thought, wait a minute, Chris, how do you know this guy is white? He looks white, sure. Maybe he's not white, though. Maybe that explains why he's saying it. Otherwise, why would he be saying it this much? That must be the answer. And I started to feel really bad about myself because I think I assume way too much. You shouldn't assume things. There's a guy in the park near my house there three times a week, big guy, muscly, wears a big black t-shirt, and he just beats up women. Three times a week, he grabs women, he chokes them, he throws them onto the floor, but his t-shirt says instructor. So everyone's like, oh, he must be teaching himself to fence. He could have just bought that t-shirt. Any creep can get sweatpants and a crash mat. Shouldn't assume. I started to feel really bad because 
this guy, he's a black guy who looks white. What's he gonna do when people get in the car? He just wants to sing along. Is he gonna be like, oh, by the way, I'm actually black. And they'll be like, uh, yeah, what, spit in this test tube? Let's see what 23 and me say about that, Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> oh, like maybe Uber could have a notification. If you get uh, an Uber driver who's deaf or hard of hearing, the app tells you, it says your driver is deaf or hard of hearing. So it's not awkward when you get in the car. Maybe Uber could be like, your driver is not white, despite the fact he's called Nathan and looks like he home brews IPAs. <laughs> And I'm in the car, I'm feeling real awful about myself, and the, the trip ends, and I was like, right, I need to know. So, because like we were in a Jeep Cherokee, so I wasn't sure if he was into cultural appropriation, I couldn't tell. I get out, and I was like, hey man, this is a really awkward question, you don't have to answer it, you can rate me zero on Uber, you can report me to them, get me kicked off the app, I just do want to ask you, you're black, right? And this is how I know he's a white guy. Because he replied, you think I'm black? Dope. And drove away. <laughs> So, thank you for sitting in the front, that's what I'm saying. I will not try and murder you.